without it to yourself or anyone. I've got about five, five, six witnesses. Take me through where you were, what you were doing, and exactly what happened. Yep. I was just with my mates. We were just working out on motorbikes and all that sort of stuff. Two of our mates came up. They were in the Army Reserve, but in a different uh, regiment. They came up to us and they said, you wouldn't believe what happened last night. We camped down at the big dam and something big terrorised our camping site. And they said, we evac in the middle of the night. They got up and took off. And we started laughing at them going, yeah, right, sure, you know. And they said, no, no, there's something big down there. We ended up getting about five, six of us together. We'll camp down there tonight. We did camp in a different spot. There were sort of tracks leading down to the big dam. And what it is, it's a weir. It's a, like a sandy sort of beachy sort of area on the side of that weir. We camped up beside the bushland. There was tracks leading down from it. So what I did is I actually got like a mouse trap. I made it into a trap. The little metal arm that went across, you know those little red caps that you get out of a cap gun? I put one of them on the top. There's a little pin and it flicked across and I tied it to a piece of uh, fishing line and I did it across the tracks. I nailed the actual mouse trap to one side of it like a tree. I ran a fishing line across to the other side. Anything went through it and pull the pin out and that little metal arm would snap across and actually hit the little cat and make a bang noise. The fire was camping all night, mucking around and yahoo and whatnot. We just had a couple of lean twos, that's all we had. One as a ground floor, one on a 45 degree angle, and two of them just as there. So we had no fly screen or anything. There was just like one just draping down. I got a can of baked beans and I put them just near the back door and sat it there. And the guys were laughing at me and whatnot. Yeah, it was a good night. We didn't hear anything. Went to bed. I heard sort of, it wasn't footprints or anything. It was like a big thump, thump. But it sounded like a, a black wallaby or something like that or a kangaroo. They were in between steps. They weren't like normal person steps. They were just like a, a big step. And the boys went, oh, did you hear that? And I said, that's a freaking kangaroo or a black wallaby. That's like halfway up the mountain. And they went, oh, OK, OK, so they're all right. Not even 10 minutes later, we heard like this tree just go, but really slowly, just real slowly, and went down. You could hear it crash. And they go, did you hear that? That's still up there, but it's coming down. 10, 20 minutes later, that big bean team started whacking around, I could hear it moving around. And I went, oh, it's maybe a little little mice or something's into it. But then I heard the heavy breathing and we're all whacking each other and I'm thinking, far out, there's something there. And where I was actually sleeping, my feet were towards Tin Can, the open end, and our head was to the, the lower end of the actual lean-to. So we got each other and I was the gamest one. I, I had a little army angle torch and I had a knife in one hand. Because there was no fly screen, I just went, one, two, three, I'm just gonna open it up. I opened it up and I pointed the torch at it. It looked at me and I looked at it and we both screamed. I just went, ah, and it sort of did the same. Um, it doesn't look like a monkey. It looks like a man, like a, like a Aboriginal sort of man, like a, it's got a wide nose, a lot of hair, sort of more on its cheek and everything. I don't know, I, I can't explain it to be honest. Um, I'm talking three feet away. I'm a bit shaken now, just the bloody talk about it, you know. And it's, yeah, I just put the light in his face. He had normal teeth, like us, he had normal teeth, didn't have canines or none of this sort of stuff but his teeth were really yellow. His teeth were real yellow and he was hairy. He just done a 180 and just took off through the bush. And I was more scared what he was of me, I guess. You know, we're both the same. The guy who went the other night, he was with us and he's going, let's see back, let's you know, get out of here. And I said, no, we're not, we're staying here. It's safer in numbers, just stay here. 
we didn't have cameras, we didn't have anything to actually see this thing was, yeah, we woke up in the morning, we looked around the campsite, and that tree was not even 20 metres away, and it was a decent-sized tree, and it's got to be at least two to three feet off the ground. It was just splintered and pushed over onto the sand towards us sort of thing. we just seen it. We, that's the tree that we heard last night. I thought it was halfway up through the bush. It was actually pretty close to us. None of my traps went off. None of the actual traps went off. So that's what I'm going. Did it see me putting the traps up? Or you know, I don't know. Later on, a couple of years later, I was talking to one of my mates that I grew up with and one of his girlfriends at the time. This story came out. I said, oh, I've seen something down there. And then she went, um, I've never told anyone before but um, I've seen something down there. Where she told me where it was was exactly behind where we were camping on the back track. She was on a horse by herself. Her horse felt the animal or wild man present. The horse put its ears up or whatever, but she said, I seen this thing. And she said, we spun around. And she goes, I was on a track and I know the track. She goes, we're in a full-on gallop, flat out, and this thing was in the bush and leaping over rocks and logs and all this sort of stuff, keeping up with her. And she was on a horse. Yeah, so, yeah. When you saw this thing, and it's only a couple of feet away, did you get a sense of how big the overall creature was? I mean, we're talking something smaller than a man, man size or bigger? I had a can of baked beans sitting on the ground and this thing had its sort of legs apart and its arms like feeding out of the... I didn't get an estimation of how tall it was, but it's none of this eight-foot stuff, you know. I think it's only anywhere between six to seven feet, you know, that sort of range or six point something or maybe, maybe a little bit bigger, but very hairy. Did you get the impression you're looking at an animal or a human or...? Sort of in between, sort of more human than animal. It's not like a gorilla or something. Very strong, you know, like six of us or something, you know, like it's decent. As you open the flap of the tent, what was it doing with the beans? Was it holding it or what was its position? No, 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 it's still on the ground. Its arms must have been longer than ours. It was hunched over, had its legs apart. I remember its hairy legs on either side. His legs were apart, like two fingers. It was flicking out of a tin of baked beans into its mouth. Just with two fingers, like, say, your index finger and the one under it. It was just like, that's too long, the fingers. It was actually flicking beans into its mouth. Didn't put the can up towards its mouth. It still had it on the ground, and it was flicking them up. I still remember one hand down low, and the other hand was up near its mouth. And when I yelled out, it yelled out, you know, and then split second, it just took off behind us. And that was the other thing. In the morning, when we found the tree on the left-hand side of us that was knocked down, the actual track behind that tin can, which was right behind our tent, mind you, mate, that was just dead the bush. This thing made a trail, like, <laughs> 100 people have walked along it, you know, like it was, it pushed it all over. And we even went, look at that, it's gone straight up there, you know, because like, I said it just took off 180 degrees. And when, when we had a look in the morning, it was dead set like a, a standard house gate that was that width, 800 wide, you know, and it was just debris pushed down. We just kept it to ourselves. We had no footage, we had no photography, we've got nothing about it. I've only got witnesses, you know, so... Did anybody else see the thing, or were you the only person that actually saw it that day? I was the only one, because everyone else was petrified. I was the only one near the, the door, pretended to be the bravest one, and stood yeah. near the door, or slept near the door, you know. Did you get a sense of the colour of the hair? The hair was brownish looking, like it didn't... It wasn't black, or... It wasn't black, it's more dark, sort of brownies looking... It was quite long, but he had hair all over him. The most unusual thing was he had a broad nose. I couldn't see his 
nostrils, you know, like it wasn't sticking up like a gorilla or something. It was more broader. But the thing that really got me was the hair on the cheeks and how long they were, like, coming down his face. You said the teeth were regular, like human teeth. But very yellow. They were big, but flat. And also the hair on the cheeks, you know, it was just too far up. It was near the eyes, near the eyes and nose sort of thing. It was very hairy. Was the hair sort of smooth like a dog or a bear, or was it... Very shaggy, coarse looking. I think the arms were a little bit longer than normal because the way it was sitting with the tin can still on the ground and just lapping it up, I guess like a monkey, I guess, with two (laughs) fingers lapping it up into its mouth. For some reason, that actually stuck with me, that I don't know why it didn't put it towards its mouth. If it was a human... It would have had the can close to its mouth, like, like a Chinese, or, you know, they use chopsticks and they, they got the food close to their mouth. This thing didn't, it sort of used its two fingers as chopsticks sort of thing, but the can was still on the ground. That's what got me sort of, I don't know why it had it, the can still on the ground. So when you were facing this thing, this thing was obviously hunched right over with its head down. Da- Correct. Its head was down yeah. near where the tin can was. So it was, yes. it was standing. It wasn't like it wasn't kneeling or crouched, or was it crouched? No, it was, it was really crouched over. Like its bum must have been nearly on the ground. No, it would have been. It would mm. have had to be on the ground. But its legs were outright in front of it to the side, and its arms were in between its legs, just flicking the food into its mouth. Oh, I did a big, ah, and it's sort of the same. It pretty much went, oh. When it ran off, did you see much of it running or you'd actually turned and gone back inside the No, I was pretty bloody scared, to be honest. It spun around. It was just full on hairy. Did you get a feeling that it was lean or was it solid or muscly or like... Yeah, what it was, was solid. Yeah, it was solid. Can't tell you much about the legs because I've been over, so I can't see much of its thigh or anything, but the top half of him was solid. It wasn't human, you know. Thinking about it now, it's, it definitely wasn't human. It was just too powerful. Knocking over that tree was a good diameter, maybe 10 inches across or something like that. Like, it was a decent tree. And this thing split it easy two to three foot off the ground. Did you um, uh, speak to anybody else at the time about what you'd seen? I mean, did you guys, did all of you talk to anybody about this? This is why I'm coming out with it now, because, you know, if I pass away, I, I want to make sure this gets out sort of thing, you know. 